so hello everyone in this video we'll be completing our login flow so we'll be making the request to the backend before that we uh, will be doing some standard stuff here the thing is whenever you are making requests I can directly make request in the uh, login page itself let's say I can import actions and make request uh, directly to the backend but that is not a good uh, way to do that the, the better way is you create services folder and inside that you create different services uh, files let's say I'm creating this auth services.js file inside this I will be making a uh, API request by functions so I will be creating different functions and I will be making request to them uh, like uh, let me just import actions first actions from actions and uh, what else we can do we can create a simple constant variable called server URL and inside that I can specify my backend server for example if I have my local host so I'll be writing local host local host 5000 slash API so this is my endpoint here right so why am I creating this in a separate file because let's say if I make requests in each of the pages and I'm, and now I'm in the production so in the production this won't work right so this local host instead of this local host there will be a domain of our website of our backend basically so for that I would have to change in each pages I would have to go to each page and then uh, I have to change this part but if I create it in a separate file or in a separate way so let's say if this domain is change uh, is if uh, this domain changes or any API endpoint if I change in the backend so I would have to make change in one place only not in all the places that's why this is the better way to do that that we'll be doing so I'll be creating two post routes of first of all I'll be creating a function called let's say register user and in that I'll be uh creating uh, not async let me just grab the data and then i'll be returning access dot post and then i'll be first providing the server url and then after that i can provide the uh, register endpoint so this register endpoint is nothing but the endpoint in the backend so which we created and we tested out with the postman as well right so this is it and then after that I can copy the same route and I can do this for the login user as well so I can create a login user and then I have to create a simple auth services object and inside that I can uh, write these function names so I can import it and I will be exporting this auth services object basically now I can export this export default auth services now I can make use of that in the uh, login page basically so I'll be calling the function in this first of all I'll be creating a simple loading button so set loading use state I can make it false initially so this loading I'll be uh, writing loading here so and design has a simple loading parameter or like, like loading uh, prop that we can pass in this I can provide loading so if the loading is true then we'll be seeing a simple uh, spinner in this button I can make it true set or let me just make a try catch block first console log I can make a simple console log here and I can add the cost response await and I can import the auth services page I can add the error log and then I can call the login user page inside that I need a data to pass right 
how to say well, let me remove it and also I can add the log uh, set loading as true so it will be initially true like whenever we'll be going inside this function so it will be true when it will get false when we receive any response so whenever we'll be receiving any response after that we can make it false or we can stop the spinner also whenever we'll be getting any error so at that time also we'll be making it false so the spinner will be stopping whenever this uh, state is false let me just create prepare the data so data will be nothing but uh, the username and the password that we'll be sending to the backend so this data will be passed inside this function because it receives the data right so this is it and i can log the response here and show you how it uh, how it gives us the response and what response is it it is giving basically to us so if i go to the login screen and let me just make this uh, login as more bigger because this h4 is not looking quite bigger i think and in the register also i can make it as h2 so that's more bigger now so if i see that you can see it is looking more cool now what we have created is we have created the user john do in our database uh, while create uh, while making the request from the postman right uh, you have to remember that and if i just let's say see the console now and if i make this request login okay so let me just check what happens now okay am i making the right request okay yeah i forgot one more thing so in these services i think i didn't write login here so i wrote a register there so login should be there instead of register if i do it now you can see i'm receiving uh, the first name last name token user id and username the thing in the yeah uh, like in the real application whenever the application is bigger at that time we don't uh, like we store all these information like tokens and other details which we are receiving from the login in a state basically or in a store or in a global store by using redux or basically context api but this is a very small application so i'll not be uh, implementing redux in here instead i will be storing uh, the details in the local storage so i can access it from other pages as well so it is very simple to store something in the local storage i'll be just making local storage dot set item i'll be using this method and i can write to do app user and after that uh, what i can do is i can stringify this uh, response which i got so json dot stringify and after that i can uh, specify the json data why am i doing json dot stringify because in the local storage we cannot uh, store the objects like this this is an object right we cannot directly store the objects uh, in the local storage uh, because uh, in the local storage uh, only strings are saved or stored so i'm, I'm converting this uh, response date uh, response dot data which is a json which is in json format basically or it is an object to a string so it will be converted in a string and then it will be stored so it will be easily stored in the local storage and whenever i will be accessing with the help of get item at that time i have to convert it to uh, a json format again so that will be doing uh, just let me just save this and also one more thing i have to also navigate uh, this thing or add a message or confirmation message to the user so i will be importing a message component or message component from the end design which is used for showing the pop-up messages on a success or on an error so let's say i can say user logged in successfully or i can simply say logged in successfully and after that i can also navigate it to a to do route right so i can go to let's say i have to create a navigate navigate 
object with the use navigate constructor or hook basically so this navigate will allow me to programmatically change the routes from one place to other place so I'll be navigating the user to to do list route so which we created uh, where in the app.js you can remember that to do list so when the login is successful I'm redirecting the user to to do list basically so the, the user will be shift to the uh, to do list after the lo successful login so currently this login user is currently uh, Aman because I, I didn't uh, like I have also used in the other app like the build uh, the already completed app was also using the same key so this will be replaced by this current username which we used for the login if I go to that you can see we are shift to the to do list and if I go to the to do app user uh, let me just see where is that to do app okay so I created the double so to do do uh, D should be smaller so it would replace this one but it generated a new key which is to do app which is our one so John do is our main uh, uh, user which in uh, whose detail we have stored inside the local storage and we are also getting to to-do list now one more thing that I'll be telling you about is catching the errors and showing into the message pop-up that you can also do with the help of message dot error so you can also write error dot message but uh, this is the one way like let's say let's say if I change something let's say I stopped the server let's say so if I stop the server and if I make the request now you can see network error so this error is coming right similarly uh, I have generated many errors in the backend like uh, we have generated many errors and we have created custom errors in the backend let me just show you that so for example the wrong password is there let's say if I enter a wrong password let me just restart it npm run dev so if I write a wrong password let's say so I'm writing a wrong password for John Do. so will it uh, give me that wrong password error which we generated here this one will it give me that no it won't give me that you can see it is giving me request failed with status code 404 but uh, this error is not basically self-explanatory right so we have to uh, write the custom error so we have to grab the error message which is inside this response basically so for that basically what we do is we have to create a util folder inside that we'll be creating a function that will be exporting that will be giving us the custom errors so I can write get error dot JS let me just copy it from the other file so we don't have to write it one more time and it will save our time as well if I copy it and if I paste it let me just make you understand so I'm exporting a function called get error message inside that I'm passing an error response or like the error we got from the backend and what we are doing is we are grabbing the message from the from this error response so in this error we are grabbing if the response is there and if response has the data which means we have we're sending a custom error message then you have to grab the data dot message so data dot message is the uh, thing in which we have to uh, grab the custom message or custom error message so our message should be in the message field let me just go to that but it is in the error field so we'll not be doing that we'll be making it in the message field let me just write you entered wrong password and this should be message not the error right so everything will work now if I save it if I do it again okay I didn't call that function let me just call that function as well 
also now if the error dot message if this is not there let's say if the custom message is not there so it will grab the error dot message which we are doing in the login screen itself right so in this we are doing this error dot message right and then if the error dot message is also not there then you can convert error to a string and then you can return this message so this is basically the case in this so let me just call this method which is get error message so I can call get error message so it will call that and I can write it I can pass this error response and it will give me write errors now and meaningful errors which we will be generating from the backend if I do that okay it's not a function get error message okay let me just save it as well I think this isn't saved now if I do this let me just refresh it okay and now let me just write some wrong password here do it you can see you entered wrong password so this error is coming from the backend in which we generated so this is our custom error that we generated from the backend so this is it in this video i hope you got something and in the next video we'll be working on the register page and we'll be uh, completing our authentication flow so thank you for watching let's meet in the next video